Hello and welcome. I'm Tom Burnside from B2B Revenue Secrets and this is the Neuroscience of Selling book summary and review. I really enjoyed this book. It was a quick read but it really resonates with me like just the talk about how to connect with people and things like that like by being visual, using simple ideas, making it about themselves and other concepts which we'll get into. There's also a lot of things called cognitive biases, which are basically shortcuts in the way we think, which is relevant to the selling process. So let's get started. Firstly, there's the triune brain model, and that is that there's three parts of the brain, and they are the reptilian brain, the mammalian brain and the hominid brain. The first two are the old brain and the last one is the new brain. So the old brain developed hundreds of millions of years ago and controls physiological functions, feelings, images and pattern matching. But the hominid brain, which is the new brain, controls facts, figures and logic. We make decisions with our old brains and justify it with logic with the new brain. It's not enough to have the best product on offer. You must have a great relationship with a buyer to appeal to their old brain. So you appeal to people's old brains by having a great relationship with the buyer and through other methods. However, there does need to be logic to justify the sale or the new brain will override the decision. There's six main activators of the old brain, and they are the me, me, me focus, simple, easy to grasp ideas, beginnings and endings, clear distinction, vivid images, and active engagement, and we'll go more into what these mean. The five most important sales skills, and they are Prospecting for new business, identifying buyers and using coaches, rapport building, perfect listening, and closing the deal. And there are 25 cognitive biases which pertain to these skills. So let's go into the first activator of the old brain, and that is the me, me, me focus. The reptilian brain is concerned with our safety, success and happiness and everything. People want to know what's in it for them. Start a presentation, for example, with an understanding of the customer's needs. Listen twice as much as you talk. This will cause pleasant neurotransmitters to be produced in their brain. You need to thoroughly research them before you talk with them so you can understand their needs better and what they like to talk about. Simple, easy to grasp ideas. The old brain cannot understand complex ideas, so you need to keep it very simple. Consider simplifying your language in presentations, proposals, brochures, and on your website. Beginnings and endings. You need to start and end strongly with impact. If you have to go over something boring, do it in the middle. Clear distinction. The old brain loves stark differences. The best way to achieve this is through a unique selling proposition. Failing that, the best thing to do is develop a why. Vivid images. Written words have little impact on the old brain. It prefers images and videos. Use images and videos in your presentations and on your website. Active engagement. This pertains to stories and case studies. If you can use similar case studies to them where the, where the result was what the prospect is looking for then do that. They will start to identify with this story. 
So that's what it means by active engagement. So now we'll cover some cognitive biases. To save energy and increase survival, our brains have developed certain mental shortcuts called cognitive biases. They can be helpful at times for speed and efficiency, but at times they can lead us astray. Prospecting for new business. The objective of prospecting is to identify and qualify new leads who can be turned into customers. Generate leads through telemarketing, digital marketing, direct mail, trade shows, networking, getting referrals, and social media. You need to qualify leads to determine if they're a good fit. Prospecting cognitive biases. Availability bias. This is where we make a quick decision based on information that is available. Don't assume a lead is qualified. False consensus bias. We can wrongly assume that others will feel how we do. So discuss with your leads, discuss your leads with your sales manager so you can actually check to see what other people think of the of the lead and not just assume they think what you do. Choice supportive bias. When we make a distinction, no, sorry, when we make a decision, we are often biased towards that decision. Optimism bias. We assume that we're likely to experience a positive outcome. Sunk cost bias. When we've spent money, we become attached to that decision because we've become invested in it. Lead management biases. Familiarity bias. We'll tend to go with something that we're familiar with, hence the need for many touches. Reciprocity bias. When someone gives something to us, we feel indebted to them and feel obliged to return the favour. So give value generously. Follow up. It takes an average of 12 touches to close a sale in B2B sales. The close rate is only 5% when people give up after the third touch. It's not enough. There are many ways to do a touch, but only three ways to do a quality touch. And those are phone call, face-to-face -face meeting, and active message, message exchange. You should always set an objective for the next touch, usually to reach the next step in the sales process. 66% of buyers indicate that consistent and relevant communication was key to their purchase decision. Rule of thumb for touches is once per month. And remember to use short emails with engaging subject lines. Identifying buyers and using coaches. Cognitive biases. Likeability bias. We are biased towards people we like, so demonstrate the qualities of a likeable person. Safety bias. Most people don't feel safe with salespeople. Build relationships with people so they feel safe with you. Trust bias. Always tell the truth and do what you say you will do. Identifying buyers. There are three types of buyers usually. The user buyer, who is asking, does your offering respond to my needs? The technical buyer, who is asking, does your solution meet our technical specifications and requirements? And finally, the economic buyer, who is asking, what kind of return on investment will I get? Using coaches. A coach is a person inside an organization who is helping you close the deal. If you have an inside coach, you have an 80% chance of winning the sale. Uh, if you don't, you have a 20% chance.
So here we have eight cognitive biases for rapport building. There's the primacy bias, which is the tendency for the first things we notice to carry more weight than those things noticed later. So you should look the part to make a good first impression. The ultimate attribution bias. We tend to see that flaws of people in other groups are because of their personality and positive things about people in a group are part of their personality. Basically, we're biased towards our own groups. Confirmation bias. We favor information that confirms our existing beliefs. Physical attraction bias. We are biased towards people who are physically attractive, so dress the part. Similarity bias. We are biased towards people who we perceive as similar to us. Warmth bias. Remember to make good eye contact because people favor you if you're warm. Physical touch bias. Remember to shake hands and pat them on the back, etc. Compliment bias. They're more likely to say yes when you make them feel good about themselves. So give them compliments. There's four personality types based on high slash low empathy and high slash low ego drive. These are drivers who want to beat the competition. They want little rapport building, focus on the big picture and aren't focused on details except ROI. There's thinkers who want to improve business processes and results. They want little rapport building, less focus on the big picture and more focus on the details. Communicators who want recognition and praise, more rapport building, more big picture and fewer details. And supporters, they want to support others. They want more rapport building, less big picture and more details. Perfect listening cognitive biases. Action bias. We tend to think taking some action is better than not doing anything even if it's actually counterproductive. Consistency bias. We will rationalize things so that we see ourselves as consistent, be consistent. Rationale bias. We are much more likely to act when given a logical reason to do so. Three steps to perfect listening. Totally focus on the buyer's point of view. Ask permission to take notes. Summarize and repeat the buyer's need back to them to get an agreement. Closing the deal cognitive biases. Anchor bias. This is the tendency to rely too heavily on the information offered initially when making decisions. Always try to be the first company to present. Bandwagon bias. Emphasize the wide adoption of your solution to buyers. Single option aversion bias. Always option always offer two to three options. Scarcity bias. We tend to value things more highly when they're in scarcity. Let people know the availability of your offering is limited or in high demand. Six closing principles. You cannot close the deal until the buyer is ready. Two, most buyers will never close themselves even if they are ready. Three, conversation and body language will tell you when they are ready to buy. Look for relaxed, open body language. Four, buyers want a definite closing proposal. Be clear in what you're asking. Direct close, alternative close, I recommend close, when if close, Test it out first close and window of opportunity close. 
after you ask for the business, say nothing until the buyer responds with a yes or no, no or an, ob an objection. And after the deal is done, stop talking. Congratulate the buyer on their great decision and change the subject.